Well, let's talk now about what we call single predicate filters, okay, or uh, three, two, one. Well, let's bring in the where clause. So we've taken a look at the select the from and the order by. The last major clause we're going to take a look at in this chapter is the where clause. Uh, reminder that we're going to take a look at things like from and group by, having, the other main clauses, but they'll just come a little bit later in the course, the join, things like that. So the where clause. Uh, let me just remind you of a term uh, you probably already remember, but do you remember what a predicate was? Well, predicates are very important when it comes to understanding SQL statements. A predicate is an expression that evaluates. Do you remember your uh, three-valued logic that evaluates to true, false, or unknown? Okay, so that's what a predicate is. Now, we also will call those a filter. So that would, I guess you could just say, also known as a filter. And filter tends to be the, the word most of us use. So if I'm talking to another consultant, we'll just change your filter. I never would say uh, you need another predicate. That just, you know, that's a very technical term. It's a very... Uh, hoity-toity term. I don't know how else to describe it. It's too, it's a geek. You know, it's like uh, it's like boasting almost or bragging about something if you were to talk that way. Um, anyway, so predicate. So what we're going to talk about in this video and really up until the next exercise are single filter queries, single predicate queries. We're going to then, once we do our exercise and focus just on the basics of the WHERE clause, then we're going to get into multiple predicates. So where you have multiple conditions, okay, so, um, you know, and I could say that that's also known as a condition. So let's talk about writing our single predicate, single condition, single filter WHERE clauses. Okay, so um, let's see. We've been playing with customer. I think that's a fair one to uh, stick with here. So I'm just going to going to use uh, really the the basics here. A lot of times you will see me in a demo format and a demonstration type format doing the asterisk because I'm trying to take the focus off of typing and put the focus more on learning. So don't take it to mean that I advocate you using the asterisk. It just means that, you know, that that's not the important part of our query right now. So for the time being, let's go ahead and put in an order by. I may take it out a little later, and I'll order it by the customer ID, and we'll go ahead and execute this. Okay, so we get 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, you know, just like you would expect. There are, uh, if you take a look down at the bottom, we get 440 rows. Now let's uh, start changing this up. We want to do some filtering. We want to put some conditions, predicates, whatever you want to call them. We want to just filter out a bunch of folks. Now the first thing that you need to know is where the where clause goes. The where clause comes immediately after the from clause unless there's a join and in that case it goes immediately after the join. The join is really an extender for the from clause. And that's my term, extender, not a technical term. So the where clause goes right here. So if I said uh, where, uh, what would, you know, like title, we'll just grab all the misters, for example. Where title equal mister. Okay? And this would be a literal, right, because I hard-coded it, I hand-typed it in. And if you remember, string literals you put inside the single quotes. Not the double quotes, but I put them inside of a single quote. And so we went from 440 rows to 255 rows. Uh, you can probably see that down there, but if not, it says 255. Uh, and you see that everybody here is actually Mr. Now, how do you know it's right? Because you wrote the query that way. Whatever you put in this query, SQL Server will answer the question correctly. I get that question a lot of, well, how do, how do I know that what I've written is right? I can guarantee you that every time you run this query, SQL Server will return to you all of the rows that satisfy your predicate. 
Now, where people get tripped up or they make mistakes is when they do not have the predicate set correctly, right? I mean, that's clear. Uh, if I change this and I don't do it right, so like instead of Mr. Period, I just put in Mr. Well, let's rerun the query. I get no rows. Okay. It's not that SQL Server is doing anything wrong. SQL Server is doing exactly what I asked it to do. I asked it to find all records in the table that had the title equal to MR. Is MR the same as MR period? No. Therefore, there was no match. Okay. See, the WHERE clause is job. Let's write this up here. The WHERE clause must decide if something is true or false. Okay. Now we're going to deal with nulls in a separate video, an upcoming section. Got a whole bunch of stuff on nulls, so I'm just dealing with the two Boolean true false values. Okay, so a row with a non null value is either true or false. Okay, for the for each predicate. Okay. So let's take a look at this entire set. You remember if I highlight this part of the code, it runs the whole thing. So let's take a look here. And let's just, um, you know, realistically it operates on the set at a time. But let's just take a look at a couple of sample rows. So title equals Mr. MR. Now that is our predicate. Okay. Is this true or false? Does Mr. period, which is the value basically substituted for title, are those the same? The answer is false. Therefore, this row is eliminated from the result set. Okay. Now, the same thing would obviously happen for all of these. None of these match up. Therefore, they all cause faults to occur. So this, all of these rows are, in fact, eliminated from the result set. Change it to Mr. with a period. Let's just run the full table. Is Mr. equal Mr.? That is true. Therefore, this row will be included in the result set. True, included in the result set. False, not included in the result set, right? Okay, I'm probably being a little bit too pedantic, a little bit too basic, and I apologize to those of you that that is a little too simplistic, but I will say that I am able to look forward on the course plan and I want to be able to bring this full circle a little bit later when we talk about nulls. So this is actually important. I think it's actually pretty important. Now let's talk about the last things uh, for this particular video that I want to cover here are the operators. Okay, so the operators in SQL are equal, right? We can say uh, less than greater than and not equal to. These are what we call the, um, I'll put them on a separate line, also called relational operators and I've also seen them referred to as conditional operators. Okay, So your, your basic ones that you're used to seeing in other languages I think. Now there are also alternative ways to write this. Uh, you could have said, um, so if I write equal, uh, less than, greater than, and I, I'm sorry, and I forgot, of course, the uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, right? I forgot to, to put those. Um, so we could have also written them with the exclamation point. So here's the these. These are the ANSI slash ISO standard. Okay, so in other words, that's what you should write. And then here is a, an alternate set. Uh, and so we'd say not greater than and uh, not less than and then not equal to. Okay, so T SQL specific here. Don't use these guys. Okay, don't do it. That's we're really a, a it's really bad form. Will it work? Yes. But I'll give you a hint, and this is going to be somewhat of the crux of the next video. Thinking negatively in SQL 
will lead you down a dark path. Uh, it is not the way to write correct statements because of how difficult it is to think negatively. In other words, it is easy to find the things that are. It's harder to find things that aren't because of how we have to think about it. Now that may be a, a difficult statement for you to grasp. I'll tell you what, let's come back in the next video. Let's talk about finding the positive. And let's talk about a little more about the operators here in SQL.